sustainability and efficiency are kind of equal. Those two things depend on each other. So anything that is generating power through nature, whether it's wind, water, uh, sun, benefit greatly by using silicon carbide. And it gives you about 10 to 15 percent more efficiency. We're just on the cusp of a rapid adoption across the automobile industry, across the industrial industries. This is an amazing moment for silicon carbide. The whole chain is forming, and now is the time that we show the industry and the market that it's doable. The technology is mature enough that it's ready to scale. And then we're changing the world in a way to a more sustainable and clean energy. Wolfspeed got started in 1987, and there were six founders. Five were graduate students, I'm um, being one of them, and then the other one was working at MCNC in, in Research Triangle Park. Um, the program was funded by the Office of Naval Research to make this material called silicon carbide. The material was known to be very important in the semiconductor field, but no one could really make it. And so we started working on silicon carbide in 1983. At that point, we didn't know that silicon carbide was gonna basically change the world. We knew it was important, but we were just trying to get our degree. Wolfspeed is a semiconductor company, but a very different semiconductor company. Most of the world knows semiconductor chips for silicon. There's a whole valley in California named after it. We've pioneered a new way to make semiconductor chips using silicon carbide, and it's way more efficient it saves a lot of energy and it helps our customers power more by using less. Wolfspeed is a leader in silicon carbide technology because we started on it a long time ago, 35 years ago, and we've been producing silicon carbide for that entire time. Silicon carbide is an interesting material. In its polycrystalline form, it's used for things like sandpaper and grinding wheels, believe it or not. In the single crystal form, it's actually a semiconductor. It doesn't exist naturally. There was a meteor in Arizona, actually, that the researchers found that material. It happened with the pressure and the heat uh, that generated by the meteor. The reason a lot of folks can't make it is because it does not melt, it sublimes, and it sublimes at very high temperatures. So to get a crystal, like in silicon, you pull a crystal from a melt. In silicon carbide, you have to do um, processes at very high temperatures, approximately half the temperature of the surface of the sun. So the materials out there that can handle those type of temperatures and the control you need to make single crystal is very difficult. So getting to 200 millimeter silicon carbide was a difficult process. We had a great advantage because we had the technology accumulation, the knowledge accumulation, but still it's a very tedious process to make an expense silicon carbide. It takes years to, for example, to take it from 150 millimeter diameter and expand the seed to 200 millimeter diameter. About five years uh, or four or five years ago, we took it as a priority for us in the research and development group. Silicon carbide is replacing silicon because it's more efficient. And what that does for our customers in the industrial area is not only do they have products that are more efficient, it helps them to achieve their ESG goals, their carbon neutral dates, and silicon carbide helps them do that. The company has an incredible track record on innovation and ingenuity. In fact, that's part of our corporate culture. Any new idea, is a good idea. So it's constantly challenging the status quo and saying, hey, look, I know we've done it this way for a long time. Is there a better way to do it? And if there's a better way, the company is open arms in terms of adopting that. We're trying to make a difference in the clean energy era um, and in terms of the sustainability. Being mindful of the available energy and then how you convert and how you utilize it for what you need. 45% of the electricity used globally is for running motors. And if you use silicon carbide, you get about 15% reduction in loss. Range anxiety is the biggest issue with EV right now. So replacing silicon with silicon carbide gives you something which is called efficiency. Efficiency is the name of the game. So when you have a more efficient system, your cooling requirements are a lot less. It gives you that more range, or you can use 10 to 15% less batteries, which is a big deal also. 
This is a really critical moment inside of our industry because the adoption of silicon carbide has happened so rapidly that we have to kind of keep up with that by investing. We're investing significant amounts of capital in manufacturing facilities. A brand new wafer fab in New York, the world's largest silicon carbide fab. And we just announced that in Ensdorf, Germany, we're gonna build another one that's 30% bigger. And we announced our new facility, the JP, in Siler City is gonna be 10 times bigger than that. So we have enormous amount of capacity coming online. Obviously, to make all this thing happen, I anticipate that we'll run into bumps and bruises and challenges along the way. And what we commit to our customers is that we'll work with them through those challenges and continue investing so that as we come out the other side, we're in a much better position. I think we can state without any exaggeration that we've basically driven the transition from silicon to silicon carbide. Without a doubt and without any inch of exaggeration, I think we can claim responsibility for starting this wave.